let's continue our discussion about counting methods. And uh, before we were looking at permutations, and with permutations, the order did matter. But there's another way to count things, and that's with combinations. And so here we go, combinations. But with combinations, um, the order does not matter. Okay, let's highlight this here. Order doesn't matter. Okay, with, with combinations, the order does not matter. Um, we have a similar formula for combinations as we did for permutations. Here's our formula for combinations. How do we uh, use all of this? Well, what does the N stand for? What does the R stand for? Once again, N stands for the total number of objects or things that you are choosing from. And R is the total number, or R is the amount of things that you want to choose. So I'll make a little note over here. N is equal to the total amount of objects. Sometimes it's people. In fact, in our example, we're going to look at people. And R is the number of objects chosen. Now, when we talked about permutations, we, I, use, I like to use the word pick and place. But with combinations, since we're dealing with a C, I just like to use the word choose. Okay? We are choosing a group of people or a group of somethings. So let's take a look at our example here. The manager of an accounting department wants to form a three-person advisory committee from the 20 employees in the department. In how many ways can the manager form this committee? There's the key word, how many ways. That tells you that you are either going to use a permutation or a combination. Well, in this case, does the order matter? Does If I choose three people and I choose... JD, uh, Courtney, and I also choose um, Sammy. Is that the same group as Courtney, JD, and Sammy this way? Sure. The order doesn't matter. I'm just choosing three people to form a group. It's not like I'm choosing one to be the president and one the vice president and one the uh, the secretary. So if in this case the order does not matter, that means I'm going to be dealing with a combination, not a permutation. So let's go ahead and do the math. Well, let's highlight a few other things in our problem. The manager of an accounting department wants to form a three-person advisory committee uh, from the 20 employees. So from that, I can see that the total number of people, not objects in this case, n is equal to 20. And the desired, or the number of objects that I'm choosing, r, is equal to 3. So this notation would be 20c3. And lots of times, I like to say 20 choose 3. Okay, you'll hear a lot of people say 20 choose 3 in this case as well. So let's go ahead and fill in the formula. N is 20, so this is going to be 20 factorial divided by N minus R factorial, so this is 20 minus 3 factorial times R factorial, so times 3 factorial. So there's the math. Well, similar to one of my previous examples, this is going to be uh, this is going to be difficult to write the whole thing out. So I don't want to go I, I don't want to go 20 times 19 times 18 times 17, etc., because that's going to take a while. We have technology on our cal using our calculator, so let's use the technology. So here we go. Let me pull my calculator up from the previous problem, and I want to go with 20 factorial. Here we go. I type in 20, and then I go math, go over to the probability menu right here, and number 4. Okay, 20 factorial divided by, and in parentheses, what do I have? 20 minus 3, that's 17. So let's go 
divided by 17 factorial times 3 factorial. Here we go. 17 factorial, math, probability number 4, times 3 factorial. And when I hit enter, it gives me the total number of combinations for having 20 people and choosing a committee of three out of those 20 people. So let me go ahead and type this in. The boss can choose, or let me change that. There are 1,140 ways to choose a committee of three people out of a group of 20 people. And there we go. Once again, I want to write my answer as a complete sentence because I started with a word problem, so let's go and answer it with a complete sentence. So what do, what's the difference, or what are we looking at with combinations? With combinations, order does not matter. Okay, You are just choosing people instead of picking and placing them. And the formula right here, and once you set up your formula, go ahead and use technology. Here's the formula set up. Use technology to get your final count. And then write your answer in a complete sentence. So there's the basics and a little mini lesson on combinations.